Autism, or what we say today, in the last couple of years, autistic spectrum disorder is basically a communication problem. And children uh, have a lack of communication which can be emphasized and observed in various areas. <clears throat> One of them is acquisition of language and speech. The other one is the communication with other children, peers, or adults. The third one is preoccupation with uh, things that we don't think valid in terms of daily life. For example, a young child that uh, would be preoccupied with cars and all the day play with the cars. There is a lack of affect and there are a variety of clinical symptoms. Now, ASD or Autistic Spectrum Disorder is divided into three parts. The more severe cases are what we call autism. The less severe or least severe cases are what we call Asperger syndrome. Usually they have a normal or almost normal language acquisition, but they have all the other symptoms in terms of a lack of effect and a lack of communication or very poor communication with others. In the middle we have what we call the pervasive developmental disorder or PDD which is the majority of the children and they have a clinical findings of all the different uh, typical findings of autism. Lack of effect, lack of communication, very pure communication. This is actually what we heard when this uh, youngster was described. Now, it fits Asperger, though we never examined them and I don't know, but we know that in children with autistic spectrum disorder, a minority of them, it is a minority, but a minority of them are very violent or might, be, might become very violent if there is a trigger that starts the violence. So there is a good possibility that uh, he was uh, an Asperger syndrome uh, youngster. Now, as I said, the Asperger have almost normal language. They are able to study at schools. They are not bright students usually, but uh, the major problem is their behavior. And uh, what he did is possible associated with Asperger. Symptoms appear very early. In the first year of age, the child might quite often be very uh, irritable has problems in sleeping and he is very uh, and has problems in eating he is very selective with his food now these symptoms can be symptoms for a variety of other behavioral disorders so they are not diagnostic for autism but during the second year of life when social problems appear when the child has to relate to others and he does not when the child has to look to his parents and he does not when the child has to be calmed by his, his parents and quite often he is not the typical symptoms start to, ri start to rise and around two years most of the children with either autism or pervasive developmental disorder can be diagnosed. The facts are that if you take the USA, the average age of diagnosis in, uh, of children with autism is around four, four years of age. In Israel it's about 2.5 years. So here we are much more alert to that. We know now, for example, due, due to recent research, that there are some prenatal factors that are associated with autism. One of them in a very recent publication, mothers who uh, get influenza during pregnancy 
and a high and prolonged fever, their children have a much higher rate to, uh, of autism than children of mothers did not have influenza. Premature infants have a higher rate of autism. Infants born to diabetic mothers have a higher rate of autism. And there are several drugs that when taken during pregnancy might cause a higher rate of autism. So this is, I would say, only the beginning. And we need many more studies on prenatal factors, which are very, very important. We need more studies on genetic factors, because autism has a strong genetic background and they are evolving more and more and more and many genes are found to be different in autistic children but yet we don't got, got, got to the point of what is the genetics of autism. And again, treatment. There are a variety of therapies. We know that when you start treatment very early, they around the age of two, three, four, when you diagnose the children, at least in the less severe cases, there is a very good chance to improve the behavior of the children. Not to, treat, not to cure the children, but improving their behavior and their communication, of course, gives them very much. And we know now, in the last couple of years, that more and more children on the autistic spectrum disorders would be uh, integrated in normal schools, which is something that nobody heard of 20 or 30 years ago. So we are in the beginning and there is a long way to go. The Hebrew University and Hadassah Medical School, the members of the uh, research, Autism Research Hub, are involved in research in the different areas actually, in the genetic predisposition of autism, in prenatal causes, in the etiology in terms of changes in the brain, in the morphology of the brain, and uh, we are also at the beginning to start up working with some experimental models of autism.